we're especially pleased to be able to showcase several of our current students today. And our first current student is Sarah Ali, who is the Berkeley class of 2016. And Sarah will be talking with us about the Global Spark Foundation. Sweat pouring down my face, drenching my shirt, and dust blowing in my eyes, there was one thought that continuously ran through my head. Eight words. Eight words that reverberated in my brain as I trekked the rocky pathways. Eight words that made me question the occurrences of the past few weeks. Eight words. This is not what I signed up for. When I dreamt of Kenya, I couldn't wait to experience what Google showed me. The Maasai tribes, the safaris, the beautiful elephants, the flowy pants. But here I was in the slums of Limuru, Kenya, walking towards the children's garden home, an orphanage and school. Upon entrance into the school, 320 students gathered around us and greeted us with the loud jambo, which means hello in Swahili. Turns out, our arrival to the school was a moment of celebration and joy for the students. They put on a huge welcome show with singing, dancing, and acrobatics. They were cracking jokes and laughing, and they seemed to be having the time of their life. At first glance, one wouldn't know that most of these students had, had been abandoned in the streets. Some had been starved nearly to death. Others had been beaten by their parents. Regardless, they were enjoying themselves. They were laughing. They looked happy and at home. A sharp contrast from the, from the rugged surroundings around them. Additionally, the students there had dreams and didn't let their surroundings stop them from slowly but steadily achieving their dreams. There was one student in particular when I asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up, she paused for a minute, and she said, I don't know. I want to be too many things. A little curious, I asked her, like what? Well, she said, I want to be a doctor and a police officer and a teacher and a painter and a pilot. That's it, I asked her jokingly. Well, no, she said. I just can't remember the rest. Despite the holes in the tin walls of the classrooms, or the tattered papers, or the nubby pencils, the students there worked, and they worked hard. They woke up early in the morning, got dressed, went to classes, did their chores, and with what little time they had left, they did what they truly loved to do, their homework. Every child, every faculty member at the Children's Garden Home had one thing in common persistence. By the end of my time at the Children's Garden Home, it was definitely the students who changed my life instead of the other way around. My experience left me with a newfound sense of empathy for others and a desire to change the world, a desire that I never even knew existed. It is this newfound desire that sparked a conversation between me and a friend on our plane ride back from Nairobi, Kenya. We were thinking of ways in which we could assist the children's garden home, even after our return. I recalled the leader of the school telling us about how the students created jewelry to sell to the local villagers in order to raise funds for the school. However, even that money was not nearly as much as they needed to support the 320 students residing there. This gave us an idea. What if we bought the jewelry from the school and sold it at various venues in our community. And thus, the Global Spark Foundation was born. We immediately began drafting proposals on that flight and, spe and speaking with our counselors for advice. Since then, we've put on a number of fundraisers across the United States and have been able to use the money earned to support infrastructure at the Children's Garden Home. And hopefully, one day, create an international network of students who are connected from around the world with their mutual desire to change the world around them. Well, I've only been telling you about our successes. Like many other organizations, 
we face a number of failures as well. However, it is through these struggles that my co-founder and I truly learn the most. Number one, be passionate. The following story is a short snippet adapted from a book that I would recommend to everybody here called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. In the early 1900s, Samuel Pierpont Langley sought out to do what no one thought was possible, be the first man to pilot an airplane. Langley was a highly regarded member of society. He was a senior officer at the Smithsonian Institution and a mathematics professor at Harvard. Langley received a $50,000 grant from the War Department to fund his project, which was a lot of money at the time. He hired a highly qualified team, used the finest materials, and had the support of the press. But was his success guaranteed? A few hundred miles away, Wilbur and Orville Wright were working on their own flying machine. Their passion to fly was so intense that it inspired the enthusiasm of a small group in their hometown of Dayton, Ohio. They had no funding, no government grants, no connections. Not one person on their team had a college education. They met in a bicycle shop. And on December 17, 1903, a small group of people witnessed a man take flight for the first time in history. How is this possible? Both teams were highly motivated. Both had a strong work ethic. Both had keen scientific minds. Both were pursuing the same goal. But only the Wright brothers were able to inspire people around them and truly lead their team to develop a technology that would change the world forever. The Wright brothers started with why. Before starting an initiative or project, Know your why. Why are you going to start your initiative? Knowing your why will not only keep you laser focused, but it will also make you even more passionate about what you are doing. And passion is key. Love what you do, know why you do it, then attack. Number two, don't expect the process to be easy. When we were originally in the development phase of the Global Spark Foundation, my co-founder and myself were dazzled by the huge impact that we could have. We dreamt of raising thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in our first week and of having a highly selective group of people who are helping us in the process. However, we found ourselves sitting behind our laptops by ourselves, researching fundraising events and finding sponsors. Through this process, we faced a lot of rejection and a lot of problems. But guess what? Problems are inevitable. Some of you here today might have recently faced a problem. Others of you might be in some sort of a situation right now. And a select few of you might not have faced a problem in a while. To those select few, I'm sorry to say that you're probably going to face a problem soon. But guess what? You can't run away from it. Whether you choose to ignore it or you choose to attack it, the problem will still persist. So why not attack it? The moment we realized and accepted the fact that we were going to be constantly facing struggles was the moment that the struggles and obstacles stopped defining who we were and what we did. Number three, don't fear change. Change is good. It's evidence of adaptation and progress. Contrary to what I used to think, Change is not an indication of failure, but rather, it is indication of growth. When we realized that our previous name, the Global Garden Project, did not portray the ideas that we wanted it to, we feared that changing the name would be proof to people that we could not get something as simple as the name correct the first time. However, after changing the name, the ideologies and themes of the organization changed for the better. Thus, Push yourself into the change zone. Change is like a muscle that constantly needs exercise. The more you flex your muscle, the stronger it gets. Similarly, the more and more you get used to the idea of change, the less and less you fear it. 
During a preliminary discussion before, before visiting the children's garden home, my counselor said to me, you're not here to change Kenya. Kenya is here to change you. And change it did. My experience left me curious. It left me hungry for opportunity. It left me with a desire for global change. It left me with a spark. A spark that I want to share with the world and a spark that grows bigger and bigger with every single dollar that we raise. It took me one month in a foreign country for me to uncover my spark. But what will it take you? Whatever it is, do it. Take that risk. Push yourself into the change zone. Unleash that spark and share it with the world. Thank you.